Yeah, it sure does. It looks a whole lot different, but I'm so excited to see our kids. Can you give us a big wave? Because we can see you on the screen. Give us a big wave, kids. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be you, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires.
desire shown from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares she raises her voice. At the busiest corner she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I always will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strength, strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body. It sets on fire the cycle of nature and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more shall salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist. And others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly warned them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Twenty years ago, I preached one of the most difficult sermons I ever had to write. I was serving in my first call and had been there less than 18 months when over 3,000 people were killed in the terrorist attack of September the 11th. There was such shock and confusion. Like everyone else, we plowed through a week of devouring every bit of news that we could absorb. The whole time, I knew Sunday was coming, and I would be expected to say, something. The church was packed with people. Our hymn selection included songs like, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, and Abide With Me. The lectors read with somber tones. I read the gospel. I took my place in the pulpit Rather than my normal invocation that says, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I prayed the concluding line that we heard today in Psalm 14, and I prayed it as a prayer for the words that I would say. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. As my heart pounded, I remember my breathing was clipped. I don't know that I had ever been that nervous standing behind a pulpit. I decided to play it safe. 
I used one of the prayers from the back of the prayer book. Prayer number six on page 816 to be specific. It was five days after the events of that Tuesday. And already it seemed that the Christian churches across the country were taking on an air that seemed to be moving away from the heart of Christ even in the time of tribulation. I said I played it safe. But I didn't really play it safe. I think what I was trying to do was play it Christian. To think on the meditation of my heart, what might Jesus say to these people that I'm called to preach to? What might be the words that our church can offer? As the pendulum was beginning to swing in a way that wasn't always clear of what would come of it. And so I prayed prayer number six. It was a prayer for our enemies. It says, O God, the Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth, deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge, and in your time, enable us all to stand reconciled before you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I think there is a temptation that's just sort of built into our national pride to conflate Christianity with who we are as a nation. Twenty years ago, it was terribly difficult to step out of the emotion, the pain, and the confusion of that day. But now, 20 years later, we seem to also have a difficulty of perspective. 20 years of warfare are winding down in just as much confusion as it seems to have ramped up with in 2000. Our faith in 2021 is found to seek questions from our faith to be able to help us to live in a terribly confusing world that is so complex with so many voices. But the confession of our faith is centered in the faith that we heard in our gospel today. Jesus turning to his disciples and asks, Who do you say that I am? Peter's quick answer, You are the Messiah, the one who will lead us, obviously meant something different to him than it did to Jesus. It seems Peter thought this is a military triumph for, the, for Israel. Jerusalem will be delivered of the Romans. And Jesus says, don't be a stumbling block. I want you to be a disciple. I want you to follow me with the same love and compassion that I have, even for enemies. We must be willing to take up a cross, to serve the other, to lose life for the sake of others and for the sake of the gospel. And by doing so, we come to know the heart of Jesus and we are saved. I remember that season, the season of Lent that came following 9-11. I invited our new canon to the ordinary in the Diocese of Kentucky, Canon J. Magnus. The name probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you unless you're in the military. Jay went on to become 
the bishop for the armed forces after his position in Kentucky. Jay was there in the Pentagon on 9-11. And I was struck in the presentations at Lent on how he had processed those events of helping people out of the Pentagon, of living at first hand, seeing the destruction and the loss. And to see a man who was so filled with love and compassion for people who had a different agenda than he and were willing to lose their life for that agenda. I was touched as Jay talked about our call as disciple to serve the other, to be able to show God's love even in the worst face that is shown to us. The disciple is the one who takes up the cross, follows the way of Jesus, and shows the world that to love God is to love everything God created. It's been 20 years. We're in the midst of a messy pullout of a war. The truth is, is that 20 years doesn't make a difference on, human, on humanity. The truth is, is that two millennia doesn't seem to make a big difference in who humanity is. We're still a broken people who need the presence of God in our life to be able to learn to be a disciple through good times and difficult times to learn the heart of Jesus, and to show others what the kingdom of God can look like as we love God and we love our neighbor. I think today, I, I won't close with reading prayer number six again. I'm going to close by reading prayer number 62 from the Book of Common Prayer on page 833. I think it's a prayer of a disciple, one who doesn't have answers, but only wants to live as faithfully as he or she can. It's a prayer that I would give to all of us in a really messy world with no clear answers, only the clarity of the, of the answer, who do you say I am? You are our Messiah, Jesus. We seek to follow you as disciple. St. Francis wrote this prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.
We stand today on the foundation of the faith that has been given to us in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for the mission agencies and their work throughout the Anglican Communion, for the Anglican Church of Tanzania, for the life and ministry of the Diocese of Arkansas, for the ministry of St. John's Parish, and for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for Presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Larry, for Father Mike, for Tim, and the staff of St. John's Parish, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and sacraments. We pray for all politicians who govern, especially President Joe, Governor Asa, Governor Kevin, and Mayor George for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of perpetual shine upon we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We ask your prayers for those who are ill, shut in, or for whom we are called to intercede on our parish prayer list. Gregory, B, George, Barbara, Chris, Sal, Bill, Debbie, Wanda, Scott, Carl, Carlene, Orland, Dennis, Tim, Jim, Rebecca, Gray, Pat, Ron, Hester, Mike, Malcolm, Ronnie, Jackie, Andrea, Mike, Larry, Lee, Jim, Catherine, and Davis. We ask your prayers for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and for all those serving our country in the military. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, 
By your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now, returning to page number 360, as we kneel together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Hello, I'm Grant Purdy. As Father Mike said, I'm on the church vestry. I have a few announcements to review with you. All of the announcements, of course, are in the bulletin and in the mailed, printed newsletter that comes out each month. If you're not getting those, please contact Vicki during the week and make sure you're getting that and you're on her list. Today, of course, has been mentioned as Church Rally Day, and the picnic is following today's service. I want to thank Rick and Jennifer Hayes for hosting at their cabin near Rudy today. And thank everybody who helped organize the picnic and prepare the food. There will be games and swimming, and there's wade fishing to do there. And please bring your own drinks and a chair if you need that. The directions are in the printed newsletter. Just quick, go I-49 north towards Fayetteville. Take the Rudy exit left on 282 and then right on Railroad Avenue. And Rick says, please park along the side of the road and don't go in through his gate, so there'll be plenty of room for people to park. There are several opportunities for worship study starting. Father Mark is starting again his weekly rector's class, which they review the readings for that Sunday. That's a really good um, time to spend. It starts this Wednesday, September the 15th at 5. He's going to do that through Zoom and at the Skinner Building, both. Also, as Father Mike mentioned, they're starting a Zoom Sunday School class at 10 a.m. September the 19th, next Sunday, and he indicated that that's for all ages. Also, Father Champlin is leading a study of Samuel and Kings that starts Sunday, October the 10th through November the 21st. That's through the Education Hour each Sunday at 9.30. The Sack Lunch Sunday, the annual fundraiser, will be virtual again this year. Look for an email for Gene Kolejewski. This is their main fundraiser. 
Also, a couple of items. The girls' night out is set for Thursday, September the 16th at the Beeland Manor. And the girls' lunch out is scheduled for Tuesday, September the 28th. If you're interested, please contact Mary Ann Arnold for reservations and get the details from her. Also, Jenny Wilkinson, our junior warden, has organized an outdoor church ground cleanup. We had one of these in the spring that went really well. This is for Saturday, October the 9th. Please come and bring your rakes, uh, plastic trash bags, weed eaters if you have anything like that. And the more people that come, the quicker we can get this knocked out and uh, get the uh, grounds looking really nice. Those are the announcements for today. Thanks. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Good job. I hope, uh, as we're comfortable, I hope to see you all uh, out there at Rudy for our parish picnic. And this is like last year as we were trying to restart with our rally day. Uh, it was looking unusual. It looks unusual again this year. But I'm um, very grateful. Thank you all for our IT folks who helped to put us out there to keep it safe so we can watch from home if we need to, and also to have our Sunday school and our Zooms. Um, it is, it's an amazing time that we live in, uh, and so we continue to walk with Christ each of those days. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
as we stand together. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A is found on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food. In the sacrament of his body and blood, send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us now and evermore. Amen. Amen.